Happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. Everyone that watches this video, I wish you a great Cinco de Mayo. Right, it's another Blooms for You episode. These are not orchids, clearly. These are my Gloriosa lilies, one bloom of which is already starting to fade. Unfortunately, they don't last that long. But I did want to dedicate the two that are here and looking quite majestic to everybody that watches this video, supporting my channel also in the comments below, and everybody that is not mentioned in my Blooms dedication in this video. You are appreciated. Thank you so very, very much. So I would like to now also go and have a look-see as to what has opened recently and dedicate more blooms. Ascocentrum Ampuyathea, Pink Dreamer. I would like to dedicate these two spikes to Mary Tona and Pie Man. And that ant that you see there is extremely perturbed. Now there's two because I've just been trying to get in there. Now there's three to remove the aphids and the ants in order to give you a pretty presentation while I talk to you and want to say thank you for being so supportive on my channel. Mary Tona and Pie Man. I am really struggling to keep these blooms clean and free of aphids. I'm really happy when I do have ants in my plants. I don't mind them so much, but this year it has been one heck of a challenge because I don't understand why this beautiful little orchid here has aphids on it when it's not even fragrant. It's next to my berry odor, which is highly fragrant, but doesn't have any aphids. So I, I don't know if they're confused <laughs> why they're hanging out on my Ampoyathea Pink Dreamer. It is a little bit annoying that I can't show you beautiful, clean, superb blooms. I've been really, really trying to maintain them free from aphids, but every time I touch them or I go in with a brush, the blooms are so, so delicate that I actually do damage as well. So it's a little bit of a hit and miss here. However, I hope that Mary Tona and Pie Man don't judge me too much for not being able to offer pristine, cute Ampoyathea blooms as much as I would like to before I do any more damage in the hopes that I can give you some beautiful little blooms without any aphids. I wanted to dedicate them to you because as I said, the more I mess with them, the more damage I do, so I do apologize. However, Mary Tona and Pie Man, I hope that you are doing well. Thank you so very, very much for being on my channel. I haven't seen both of you for a while. Mary, the last time I saw you was with my Black Pearl video. So I hope you're doing well. Everything's okay in your part of the world. And I hope that you will also see this video so that you know that I am very, very grateful to have you here. And Pie Man, you showed up on my new subscribers notification. I appreciate it very much, but let me know as well if everything's okay, where you are at. So, my little Ampoyathea, Pink Dreamer, thank you, Mary Tona and Pie Man for your support. She blooms for you. This is my Dendrobium Saraula, and as I have three blooms, and the name of the next person I would like to dedicate these blooms to, to say thank you ever so much, has three letters in their name, M and D, D. So, M, D, D. These three blooms are for you. I would like to say thank you very, very much since your comment from the Ceramus Lecca video. I appreciate the fact that you had some very good insights and your kind and encouraging feedback. And my Cerula is now going to start doing what she did last year. It'll be a little bit of a bloom after bloom after bloom, which is super appreciated because she just lives on the mount together with my Aphyllum and the Ceratolabium dendrobium as well. So we can back off. I have to be very careful because uh, Aphyllum is not yet in bloom, but fully loaded. So it's a bit difficult to 
really do these cute little blooms justice without maybe making a mistake here with my tripod and camera kit. But I think we can see her. Bit of a cloudy day today, but that works in her favor. When the sun does come out, these blooms do have a little bit of a crystalline effect to their petals and sepals. Absolutely beautiful. This year, I am seeing the first flush without any touch of aphids. No aphids on them at all. Super pleased about that because the aphid struggle is a little bit real this year. Strange, strange. Maybe our mild winter. Well, I didn't think it was mild, but who knows in the insect world. But look at that. I do see them every day. I don't show you my Dendrobium sorella a lot. I don't know why. I guess everything else in the blooming alley is right there, easy to film. And this one hangs facing east. And uh, I should make a mental note to show her more often because these blooms are so Ritty, especially if I can show you the back. Look at that little spur coming out. Very different spur for a dendrobium. Beautiful. Now they do show up a little bit more pink on camera, which is fine. And if that cloud would come back, they would turn a little bit more of a deep lavender. So the Saraula doing reference to them having a blue hint as blue as one can think of when it comes to the dendrobiums. But yeah, I'm so glad I have some clean ones to offer you MDD because they also get a little bit affected when you put water on them. They're very, very sensitive to water. So when I spray them out, last year it was always dripping on the blooms down the cane. But this year they're standing out really nicely from the mount that no water gets on them. And now I'm able to appreciate and share beautiful Saraula blooms. Thank you so very, very much, MDD, for your support. Hope you too are doing well. Up here in the lofty heights of my blooming alley, I've got my Vanda, which I call Leopard Yawn blooming. I have two spikes, but seeing as one is smaller than the other, I have plenty of blooms, which I'm going to dedicate to you, Mike Sandy and Shellyan Maula, or Mola. Mike Sandy and Shellyan Maula. So this is possibly a Van der Suarez crossed with Cristata, maybe Tricolor. I don't know. It was sent to me by an eBay seller that has fantastical names. When he said dragon lip or something like that, I'm like, nah. When it bloomed for me, I said, this looks more like a leopard yawn. And for that reason, I call it Van der Leopard Yawn, just to be whimsical and a reminder of Africa. Mike Sandy, I remember a comment of yours. I took a screenshot. I still have as yet to make a t-shirt or a mug out of it but I rephrased it a little bit to shorten it but you left something along the lines of life we are forced to live but the hobbies and things we collect and love are what keep us alive and that stuck with me I asked your permission if I could use it for some merch and I still haven't gotten around to it but when I do I will let you know and I will ask your opinion before even putting it on my shop and see if there's an article that you would like because I think this is a beautiful quote and you put it under the video of quitting the orchid hobby. Yeah, it was a great quote, it stuck with me. So life we are forced to live, but the hobbies and things we collect and love are what keep us alive. And that is worthy of some form of poster or a sticker or something and I'll I still have to get around to creating that I will contact you and let you know if you approve of what I do with that quote and Shelly Ann I met you on Abigail's channel haven't seen you around for a while just want to make sure that you know that I appreciate your support as well both of you thank you ever ever so much 
for being so generous with your time on my channel. And a quick update if I can. Let me see if I can. One pollination failed on this orchid and the other one, and I turn you around, is a success. That's a good one. That is crossed with self and you can see the seed pod well, the ovaries are starting to swell. Perfect. So Mike Sandy and Shelly Ann Maula, let me know that you're doing well, that everything is okay. Thank you ever, ever so much for your support here on my channel. My Catlia Maxima. That bloom here, I thought I could snip it off, but it just fell off in my hand. That was decimated by a caterpillar, clearly not pollinated. Let's tidy her up a bit. Now, with regards to this bloom dedication, I'm going to leave it in the family. Catlia Maxima is special to my heart, and no offense to anybody, but there's somebody in my life that is so supportive every day watches me in silence, or lets me be silent, no judging, and that's my daughter. She has supported me throughout this YouTube journey while I was frustrated trying to learn software so that I could get my act together. On the days where it's hard to film, she was there listening to me stumble through my words so I want to dedicate this funky blooming, but still pretty, but a little bit different to what I am used to for my maximum, to my daughter, Alexandra, for her support, her patience. When I say I don't have time, I have to film, she goes shopping and lots of other things. She drives me around to the garden centers when I need somebody to help me carry stuff. She waits patiently looking at blooms while I fiddle around and try to figure out sizes of pots. Do they match? Do they not? On the days that she doesn't want to come into the garden center with me, she waits patiently in the car. And I just hustle and hope that I don't take up too much of her time. And every time that I think I am prepared and I've made a list of what I need regarding pots, sizes, and the corresponding orchid I'm planning to do it with, there's always that one thing that I forget or I got the quantities wrong after all. And then patiently, we will go again. Granted, not the same day, you don't want to push my luck here, but her patience and her support has been extremely, extremely important. No judgment, understanding. Sometimes she pops in some ideas and makes me laugh. If this was her channel, she would not be camera shy. But anyway, I wanted to say a public thank you to my daughter and my Maxima will bloom for her every year. Every blooming, I would like to dedicate and say thank you to her and use my Maxima to do so. So thank you, Baba, for everything that you're putting up with, with me so patiently and with a wicked sense of humor. I love you lots, Baba. This one blooms for you and it will always bloom for you. Did I say that I love you? I have had a second flush of my Dendrobium Tetragonum variety Giganteum and I want to dedicate these blooms to you, Julianes, because I want to say thank you very much to you for supporting my channel and going the extra mile and becoming a member. I really, really appreciate it. It's been a while since I've seen you. However, I hope that you are enjoying the extra content Thank you so, so much for signing up to become an Orchid Ninja. Thank you, Julian S. My Dendrobium Tetragonum variety Giganteum has three blooms and it has two more blooms coming. But I wanted to get in here because I already had a bloom down here that I wanted to wait for, for these to open to give you a better display. However, it 
wilted a little bit too fast for my liking, so I thought I'd better get in here now, film these blooms, dedicate them to you, and not wait for these to open, just in case these will fail. So they've been open now three days, looking lovely jubbly and smelling divine. Very, very intense jasmine smell, but there's, there's a, there's a hint of some kind of an acid in the background that I always liken to, you know, aluminum being welded or cut on a building site. It's a very, very complex fragrance, but it has its perks and it's very, very intense. So I really, really like it. It's not something that I am opposed to. After this blooming, I am hoping that this year my tetragonum is going to give me two new growths. But we're just going to have to wait and see because clearly there are no signs at the moment. But two would be nice. I only got one last year. Meanwhile, it's been, it was the biggest one that I've ever, ever had. Ooh, with a little bit of sun. Here we go. Yeah, but it washes out the detail of the lip. As much as I love blooms in the sun, on camera, they just lose their detail. Look at that. I love this orchid. It is such a compact grower. And I have it just in small lava rock with semi-hydro. And I hope that my comment and my thought process behind why I was doing lava rock and semi-hydro, although we know lava rock isn't a wicking property, but all the pores and the things in there. Just wondered if that comment made sense, Julian. Anywho, thank you very, very much. Orchid Ninja Julian S. Sun. <laughs> I appreciate your support. Thank you, Julian, so much. Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day. Happy Cinco de Mayo.